This is an example of how the analysis for a complex problem, in this case the Challenger disaster, can begin simple with three to five Y questions and then expand as information becomes available. We'll go up to a, a 20 Y. I'll be demonstrating our cause mapping method for investigating and preventing problems. My contact information is on the screen. There are three basic steps to problem solving. Define the problem, conduct the analysis, identify solutions. In this video, we're gonna focus specifically on the cause and effect analysis. The loss of the Challenger was a significantly adverse event. The question is, why did it happen? And the common explanation is the loss of the O-ring, but there's more to it. This analysis is accurate, it's just not very thorough. There's more detail that can be added. There was an impact to safety because of the loss of seven crew, and the loss of seven crew was because the challenger was lost. So this is a simple cause and effect analysis. It is a three Y cause map. At the time of the incident, it wasn't known that the O-ring failure was part of the shuttle disaster. What they knew was that the external tank had exploded. They didn't know why the external tank exploded, but NASA has tracking cameras that follow the shuttle on ascent, and those cameras showed at 57 seconds a small plume out of the solid rocket booster on the right side that became much larger in a half a second. Why did that propellant leak from the booster? There were also cameras on the launch pad and that provided specific information about the O-ring. So this is a 5Y for the Challenger disaster. This analysis begins on the left with the negative consequences and uses why questions to work backwards through the issue, one cause and effect relationship at a time. This five why turns into a six why that shows that the outside air temperature affects the function of the O-ring. The pressure inside the solid rocket boosters causes the joint to flex on the booster and creates a gap. Because of the cold temperatures, the O-ring moves slower and it's unable to fill this slightly larger gap in the joint. When that O-ring is not compressed or loses compression, there's no seal. It allows hot gases to pass by or blow by the O-ring, which causes the joint to leak propellant. Instead of writing O-ring failure, which is too generic, it must be broken down into specific cause and effect relationships. This 7Y shows how outside air temperature is causally related to loss of the Challenger. Not everyone sees a problem the same way. So someone may build a 5Y that explains the loss of compression on the O-ring was caused by the joint rotation. The joint on the booster flex too much because of the design. So there are two linear analyses on the screen. There's a 5Y caused by booster design and there's a 7Y caused by temperature that used to be a 5Y. There are two different analyses that are both accurate. They combine to provide one more complete analysis. It's now an 8Y, which is a more thorough explanation of this issue. As we continue asking why questions, the cause map continues to expand as more detail is added. The combustion gases eroded the O-rings because of the loss of compression on the O-ring and the hot pressurized gases inside the solid rocket booster. It's now a 9Y. The hot pressurized gases are because the solid rocket boosters are firing, which is a 10Y. If you look at the loss of the crew, it is because the Challenger broke apart and there was no crew escape system. So this 11Y shows the original yellow boxes that were a linear analysis, but it now has been expanded into different causal paths that reveal options for mitigating risk. Should we affect booster design? Should we change launch criteria? Can we do anything about the crew escape module? It just gives you options that even if something goes badly, there are different ways to mitigate the risk of this incident occurring again. It can expand further. This is a 20 Y cause map that shows some of the supporting evidence. Uh, it's accurate, but it's still not complete. More detail can be added. So regardless of the complexity of your issue, you can start with a simple linear analysis and then expand as needed to thoroughly explain the details of what happened. I encourage you to test this approach on one of your problems and compare it to what you're currently doing for problem prevention. Uh, there's a link in the description with additional resources for you to start an investigation. I hope you find this information helpful for the problems you're working. Thanks for watching and have a good day.